The Discover College Soccer Podcast is sponsored by VO. VO is the number one AI camera solution helping players capture college recruitment videos. Check out their new starter and family options by clicking on the link in the description or visit Discover College Soccer to learn more. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Adam from Connors State in Oklahoma. Welcome, Coach. Thank you for having me, Matt. Yeah, thanks for being here. We have a uh, unique position. I've I've interviewed a couple folks who have both men's and women's head coaching responsibilities, but I think you might be the first one I've interviewed that is both head men's and women's and starting a brand new program. So uh, this should be this should be interesting to kind of hear the 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 path to uh, to how we got to where we are today. Yeah. It was a unique opportunity that brought me here. Uh, it's hard to pass up being able to build something on your own. Yeah. So you and I were, were, were just chatting. So um, this fall will be the first season for both the men's and the women's teams. Um, and you've been there for about six months now. Is that about right? Correct. Okay. So, you know, I know you're coming from another college program. So you, so you have college soccer background. So some of these questions you may have to lean on previous experience since you haven't been a through a whole season yet but uh but so what was it like from a recruiting perspective building a brand new program especially a two-year program where you you kind of have to recruit twice as much anyway yeah so it was it was a bit of a challenge um I kind of knew that was going to be the biggest challenge coming in especially coming in so late um because I did get here at the beginning of February and Really, by February, most of your athletes that are in their senior year have really made a decision on where they want to go. So the availability wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of numbers available. Um, this spring, I went to about 55 games <laughs> um, in order to get my players. Um, I didn't take a day off from February to the end of May. Um, I was recruiting every Saturday, Sunday, recruiting every night. Um, yeah, it was that was the biggest grind of getting everything set up. Um, Cause like I said, most people have already made their decisions by, by February and I didn't have an assistant at the time. So it was fill the rosters by myself, go to all these games, all these events by myself. So that was very challenging and very, very time consuming. So speaking of going to, to games and events and stuff, so what, what was your focus there? Were you going to, to high school games, to club league matches, to tournaments, showcases, all of the above? What, what, where was your focus? I went to everything within a two-hour drive, and I, I really do mean everything. There, there wasn't an event that is within a two-hour drive of here during that time that I didn't go to. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I was at over 50 games, games and events, so. Cause I'll count like a tournament weekend, one yeah, event. Right. Um, so it, so, it was a lot. <laughs> so how do you see that moving forward? I'm assuming, you know, I, you have full rosters for the fall. Is it, a, is it all first years? Do you have a few second years? So you have some, some rolling off. So how's that going to affect your recruiting focus moving forward? So everyone that's coming in is a first year freshman, a true freshman. Um, when it comes to bringing in transfers, I tend to do that more when I'm at a four-year school. Um, for me, doing that at a two-year school, yes, it, it obviously transfers help. But for me to bring in someone just for one year and then have to find them another place right after, it, it doesn't really seem worth it for either party because um, obviously someone's going to have to move colleges go through that whole transfer process and then you know four months later they're going through it again really because once the season's over that's when you start looking for where can I get my graduating players to transfer to um, so typically I do like to bring in true freshmen at a junior college setup um, because one of the biggest parts of a coach's job at a junior college is can I get my players to a four-year school under soccer scholarship, you know, get them the opportunity that they should have probably had before they came to my school. Um, Cause it, junior college is definitely a different path that not, not everyone takes advantage of. Um, there's obviously there's pros and cons of going to a four year school to go into a junior college 
you know, th there's goods and bads of both. So um, really it was just, can I get a, can I get players here that I think will stay for two years are willing to do what I say and willing to fit into my system. Um, because growing up, I was coached by a former technical director of Ajax out in Amsterdam. Um, so that's the type of system that I like to play. It's very high pace. You know, you're moving the ball around a lot. You're high pressing. Everyone's moving 24 seven. So bringing in players that I thought could fit that mold was really important for me. And I didn't quite want someone that was just going to come in for a year, hope they could fit in and then have to transfer again and then have to fit in at another spot. No, that makes sense. And and you've alluded to it a little bit just now, but I guess what, what kind of makes up the, the things you're looking for in a player, whether that's on the field stuff or off the field stuff to, to make you want to bring them into to Connor state. Um, so actually I'll start off the field. Cause that's, that's really how I prefer to start all the time. Um, first and foremost, they have to be a good person. You know, as a college soccer team, we spend a lot of time together. Um, whether that's for team activities or not, um, especially here at Connors, we're the only fall sport. So when we report for preseason, we're going to be the only people on campus for two weeks by ourselves. Um, so making sure that you don't have any bad eggs that are going to ruin people's fun and, you know, are just not a good hang. That's pretty key for me. So be a good person. Um, obviously second, be a good student, you know, at the end of the day, being a college athlete is great, but you're here really to get your education, get your degree, and move on to the next step in your life. Um, so I do look for players that I don't necessarily think I'll have to babysit with their grades. You know, I don't have to go in every single week and check their grades and say, all right, well, you're slipping here. We need to add a couple extra hours study hall, you know, silly nonsense like that. So being a good person being a good student. And then when we get to soccer, it's all right. Can, can you fit into my system and can you be coached the way I coach? Because the way you're getting me right now is basically the way I coach. I don't yell, you know, I mean, obviously like when we're at a game and I'm trying to get a message to someone all the way across the field, I have to raise my voice, but I'm not a yeller. Um, I grew up in a very positive soccer environment where my coach never told me negative things about my game. He would tell me how I can make things better, but he would never say, you know, that pass was bad. You know, you're not good enough to play here. It's always, you know, you can do this better. You can do this better. Move this way instead of this way, because it'll help you in the long run. So being in a very positive environment and making sure that you don't have those players that when they mess up, you know, start screaming and cursing and getting mad at their teammates for making a bad pass. That wasn't really a bad pass. They just took a bad touch. So it's, it's finding players that are willing to be coached the way I coach and then can fit into our system. Um, oh. So like, like I said, it's it's a very high pace system. It's very high pressing. You know, it's you work for ninety minutes, um, and it's it's not easy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the school. I'm I'm sure we've got some folks not familiar with with Connor State uh, there in Oklahoma. So, what were some of the things besides the uh, obviously the draw to be able to create something new from scratch, but from a school perspective, what are some of the things that drew you to the program and being there for six months now? What are some of the things that you found that are that are really great about the school? So I'm originally from a very small town outside of Tampa called Plant City. Um, so coming here to a very small town again, it felt like home. You know, I got here for, for my interview when I came here. They picked me up at the airport, you know, they, they drove me around town, you know, they showed me everything and they really treated me like family right away. And that's really important to me is having a good support staff around you at a university because as coaches, like we can only do so much for our, 
student athletes. You know, the professors have to pull their weight. The administration have to pull their weight. The counselors have to pull their weight. So in the few days that I was here, I really felt the support from every single direction. And then since I've been here, you know, the support's just been unreal. Um, I mean, like I said, from February to May, I didn't take a day off. And there were people that were coming in on their days off because I, ha I asked them something. They're like, you know, I can't really do that at home, but I'll come in for a few hours and help you out. So it, it was just an unreal support. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest things was the support that I had from the school's president from the start. Um, normally, college coaches, we don't interact with our school presidents very much unless we're in trouble. <laughs> Um, usually the only time you see him is if he's like, Hey, uh, we might need to revisit your contract, <laughs> but here, you know, he, he hangs up his phone and meets every single recruit that I bring on campus. He comes and just sits in my office and talks and just wants to, wants to figure out who I am and then wants to learn soccer. Um, because obviously that's very new for everyone here and they don't really know anything about it. So just the support and how much interest I've seen from everyone else at the school has really made me feel comfortable here. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, you had mentioned it before, you know, really, it's not just soccer. Kids are going to school for the academic piece. So right. what have you seen uh, about the academic side of things at the school in terms of how your brand new student athletes coming in will really be able to succeed, not just on the soccer field, but but also in the classroom? So the cool thing about coming to a school like Connors is one, you have a very personable experience when it comes to your education. Um, most of our classrooms for your basic prere prerequisite courses like your comp one, your algebra, stuff like that, are around 20 to 25 students. When you get into classes that you've picked because you might wanna go into a certain direction, so your elective courses that are more centralized under one subject, you, you might have a class with five to 10 people. And to me, that's amazing. I, I went to a small college and, you know, the day after a game, my professors would be like, hey, you know, Adam, how'd the game go? Or they talk about the game. And that's something that I felt here is that the professors, because it's such a small environment, they know exactly who you are. They know everything about who you are as a student athlete here at Connors. So they're here to support you. Um, and it's big because obviously the end at the end of the day, we're here to get them to the next level. Um, so being such a personable e education and then having the opportunity to transfer anywhere in the country because we're an accredited junior college, our associate's degree transfers anywhere in the country. So it's it's a good opportunity and it's it's definitely a path that I would encourage players to kind of let go of their biases about because a lot of people do have a bias about going to a junior college, which I understand. But at the end of the day, when you're interviewing somewhere for a job, you're not going to say, oh, yeah, I went to this college, this college, this college, this college. Really, at the end of the day, you're going to say, I got my bachelor's, my master's, whatever your final degree is. You're going to say, I got that from here. And then if they ask about other experiences, you can go into that. But for the most part, you're early classes, your first two years of college, they're going to be the same courses anywhere you go in the country. So it's important to find somewhere that you feel a lot of support. You know, the professors are good at working with athletes because that's, that's a big problem with a lot of schools is that when you're missing class, you know, two, three times a week for games because you're in season, you know, the professor's just like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be bothered with the student. Our professors make sure that they have every resource they need to make sure they're successful. I mean, we even have free air cards here at the school so that when we're traveling to games, we can grab a few air cards and pass them around the bus so everyone can still do their homework and turn in assignments on time, which is not something that every, every school gets. I mean, I've been at NAIA schools, I've been at Division three schools, I volunteered with the Division II school. So some of the resources that we have here are better than I've seen at other universities that I've been at. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, let's let's fast forward here a couple months and put you, say, in the heart of the season in October. Can you walk me through what you see a typical week looking like for the players in terms of when is classes, practices, kind of what does the game schedule look like, that kind of thing? Okay, so most weeks we play twice a week. Usually it's Wednesdays and Sundays. We do have one week in October that from Sunday to Sunday we have four games. And that's not very typical. That's that's going to be a brutal week. But a typical week for us is a game on Wednesday and Sunday. Um, practice every other day. Uh, typically what we do is we go to class between like 8 a.m. to like 1 p.m. is usually the latest. I like my students to be in class. Um, that's another cool thing here is the counselors sit down with the coaches and say, all right, when do you want your students out of class so that they can make it to practice? So I'm able to help set their schedules that way. So most of them will go to class for about two to three hours each day um, between the times of 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, and then the men's team practices at 2 p.m. That way, you know, kind of have a little bit of time after class to kind of switch that mentality. And then the women's practice will start at 4 p.m. Um, like I said, practice every day that we don't have a game. You know, obviously throw in recovery sessions in there as well, the day after games a lot of times. Um, but that's the typical setup is you go to class two to three hours a day, go to practice. And if you have study hall that night, you go to study hall. Otherwise, the rest, the rest of the time is yours. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit more about about the team. And as I, well, I know you mentioned, you know, obviously you have full rosters, but is there a roster size you feel is ideal, you know, moving forward that you're going to try to hit each year? So for junior college, it's a bit different than four-year schools because most four-year schools won't schedule two games in every single week. Um, sometimes they'll have a bye week. Sometimes they'll have a game, a week with just one game. We're never like that. We're always going to have a week where we have at least two games. So for me, a roster size needs to be between 25 to 30. Um, I like to have depth in every single position. My, my rule is I bring in minimum one of each position every year. Um, so typically my recruiting classes are between 10 and 15. Um, but the importance of depth is huge for us because – I mean, it's hot here <laughs> and it's hot all around the country during August and September. So most of our early games, you know, we're playing in 100 degree weather where it's it's miserable for 90 minutes. You know, it's it's tough. So having that depth and having that next man up so that, you know, I can get our really, really important players, you know, an extra five minutes at the end of the first half. Say, all right, let's pull them off for this last five minutes get them a 20 minute break rather than just a 15 minute halftime break. You know, so, so depth is really important to me. Um, so I, I do like to keep around 25 to 30. Okay. Well, in terms of staff, I mean, uh, it's hard enough being a uh, head coach of two programs. So what, what, what does the support staff look like for you for, for each of the programs? So I did just hire an assistant. Um, he is, my only assistant, he's the full-time goalkeeper coach, but he's been coaching about seven years. Um, I worked with him a little bit at Millsaps. He was on the women's side at Millsaps. I was on the men's side. Um, so I got to know him pretty well. Um, but he takes care of all the goalkeeping. You know, obviously he helps with recruiting. He helps with, you know, everything else that comes with running a program. Um but really, as far as coaches, it's just me and him. And then obviously we have our athletic trainer. You know, we have our administrators. We have an athletic director. Our dean of student life is very heavily involved with helping the athletic teams as much as possible. You know, taking the little tasks off our hands, you know, making sure move-in days go well, making sure that's all set up so that we don't have to do stuff like that. Um, and then the counselors and the registrar here have, honest, in my opinion, have just gone above and beyond um, because they're so willing to help um, and they're so willing to just 
drop what they're doing and be like, all right, you know, you got to have everything done by August. So we're going to drop what we're doing right now, get what you need done. And then we'll come back to this. Um, so coaching wise, it's just me and my assistant, Richard Bench, and then just the entire school kind of pulls their own weight and helps everyone else when they can. All right. Awesome. Well, Hey, we've, we've covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of different areas, but the way I like to end these is if, as a college coach, if you could give one piece of advice, one nugget of information, any parent player family going through the college soccer recruiting process, what would that be? I'll give one for parents and one for players. All right. Parents do not lead any conversation or any interaction right away. That's a huge turnoff to any coach. We're going to look at it as first, does this kid really want to go here or does his parent want him to come here? Second, we're going to say, all right, does this person really want to be a college athlete or does their parent want them to be a college athlete? And then it just show some interest. Like if your parents the only one showing interest and you're just sitting there with a blank look on your face, nodding every couple words, to me, it just looks like you're not interested. You know, you don't want to be bothered coming here. So I would turn to a different direction at that point. For a student standpoint, I would say watch college soccer. Too many players do not do that and don't understand the differences between the levels. Everyone has this dream of going Division One, which, yes, for the people that make it, to the top division one schools, it's fantastic. But as a coach, we always go back to the, to the mean stat. 7% of people that play high school level, whether that's high school soccer or club soccer in the U S 7% make it to college on an athletic scholarship. So 7% of you are going to make it here to a college, fulfill your dream of being a college athlete, and the rest, you know, it's just not in the books for you. But if you're part of that 7% and you're just, yep, I'm going D1 or nothing, then you're really limiting yourself because you don't know the experiences you're going to get at these other schools. There's Division two schools that are absolutely better than some of the Division one schools. There's Division three schools that have amazing facilities. There's NAIA schools where you'll go and – you might be one of like five Americans and you'll meet so many people from around the world. Or you can come to a small school like Connors and you'll know everyone here. I mean, it's it's hard not to walk past someone and be like, oh, yes, they, they are on the basketball team or they're on the softball team. You know, everyone knows everyone at a small school like this. So I encourage people to go to college soccer games, every single division see what level you realistically think you fit at and then visit as many schools as you want there. I mean, you unofficial visits, you can take as many as you want to as many schools. So take them. Like if you're, if you're going on a vacation and you guys are driving, I highly suggest, Hey, let's find one or two colleges on the way there or on the way back home that we can just stop by, visit. We don't even have to interact with the soccer team. We can just say, hey, I want a college campus tour. See if it's a good fit. It may not be, it may be, but limiting yourself with these opportunities saying, you know, I'm going D1 or nothing. Or if you have your mind set on one school since you're like in eighth grade and that school never contacts you for a college scholarship. You know, you're, you're really just hurting yourself at that point as, as a college athlete. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. In fact, uh, we're leaving Wednesday for our family vacay and stopping at a college, uh, on the drive, doing exactly awesome. what you recommended. So, the, uh, you know, the drill. <laughs> exactly. Well, coach really appreciate the time. Wish you the best of luck in this first season. Uh, looking forward to maybe checking in with you next year, see how things are going and, uh, really hope, uh, you have a successful first year coach. Yeah, of course. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak on your podcast and it's great meeting you. Great conversation. And you're welcome to call anytime. I'll always take the time out of my day. Awesome. Thanks. Take care. Yep. You as well.
Hi, everybody. It's Matt from Discover College Soccer. I hope you're enjoying the podcast, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I also wanted to let you know about the Discover College Soccer Study Table. This is our brand new online portal that is complete with a 14-part online course giving you all of the ins and outs of the college soccer recruiting process. There's also a wealth of resources such as checklists, templates, there's the spreadsheets that have every soccer program in the country along with their coaches, their contact information, their social media information, uh, some basic stats about the school and more. Plus there's an online community where you can ask your questions, share your wins, your losses, any questions that you may have around the college soccer recruiting process. It's all there at the Discover College Soccer study table that you can find at discovercollegesoccer.com slash study table and hopefully we will see you there.